In this video, we're going to explore brute force attacks and dictionary attacks. These are attacks against applications and services. And even though we could use a packet sniffer or we can use IP spoofing techniques to try to get user accounts and passwords, a lot of password attacks are going to be done using what we call brute force. Multiple repeated attempts, either interactively or offline. So you'll run a program like John the Ripper, Kane and Abel, there's a bunch of them. You can find them in Metasploit, Kali Linux, all the exploit kits have them. These are basically repeated attempts to get a user account and the password or both. And obviously we're trying to brute force the highest privilege level account we can. Uh, if we can't get an admin account or a root account, we'll try to get any account and then try to escalate our privileges. You can run these online against the systems, like I said, interactively or you can get stored hashes that are on domain controllers, database servers, backend database servers. Get these hashes and then you can try to run through brute force guessing of the inputs. And if you do a SQL injection attack against a web server's backend, often what you're trying to do is to get those hashes so you can get that information about the accounts, their credentials, credit card numbers. A wide variety of tools out there Brute force attacks typically are done with the help of a dictionary list or a word list. These are lists of common passwords. There are uh, dictionaries of dictionary of English words. And there's also cracked password lists. So you can go on the internet and you can find a ton of places that were hacked and they just basically publish these password lists up there. What the word lists and the dictionaries are doing nowadays is they will go beyond just dictionary words. They will use patterns on the QWERTY keyboard, okay? You know, where you have on the left-hand side, you have, you know, 1QAZ going down. So they'll do patterns on the QWERTY keyboard. They'll also understand and know a lot of the substitutions that are used uh, with characters. So the at symbol is used for an A a lot. The bang or the exclamation point is used as an L or an I. The five is used as an S. You know, there's a lot of these things that are very common, a zero for an O. So they'll, they'll include all those different variables as well. So your strong passwords may not be as strong as you think because of some of these hybrid cracking methods that are out there. 